So now we're going to install Clipper on our Raspberry Pi. So for that, we need to chuck in your micro SD card onto your PC. And then we have to open the Raspberry Pi imager, like just here, and then choose your Pi model. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, so I'm going to need to choose this one. And then our OS, we're going to need to choose other specific purpose OS. There we need to choose a 3D printing here. And then we need to choose Mainsail OS. Here you will have to choose the latest one available. At this time it's 1.3.2. That shows it. And then we need to choose a micro USB, which is a 64 gigs one that I put in. That shows that. And then you have to just choose next. It will ask you whether you want to choose your own options, whether you have to want to change it or not. So I am going to. So I choose the first option here. And here you have to put in your printer's name here. I've chose VZBot 330. And then you have to choose your Pi name. So I named it Pi. And then you have to give it a password. I choose Raspberry, just standard. And then your SSID, you have to put it in here. And then you have to put in the password for your Wi Fi. go and choose your Wi-Fi country so the country you're in and then the region and the rest of these options we're not touching so we just say safe and then you have to choose yes and now it's going to ask say that everything that is on the micro SD card will be deleted Do you want to proceed you say you choose yes and then it takes some time for it to completely make this uh, for me, it takes around three to five minutes. I just let it do its thing. Do not touch anything. Introducing PCBWay.com, the online one-stop shop for all your electronic ambitions. Need circuit technology or small-run manufactured parts? PCBs, 3D prints or CNC millings in PLA, ABS or aluminium and a whole rainbow of colour options. Upload your specs, approve the design, pay and await express delivery. Fair pricing, no minimum orders and total control throughout. Contact our design team at PCBWay.com. There we go. Now it says that the main sale OS is being written onto your micro SD card and you can just take out your micro SD card safely. You just press next and go ahead and take your micro SD card out of your PC and put it inside of your Raspberry Pi and power on your Raspberry Pi. So the next step is to put our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi and then boot it up and wait a couple of minutes, like two, three minutes, and then it will connect to your Wi-Fi network, hopefully. And after that, we need to open a program called Angry IP Scanner. This one is like free to download on the internet. So you just Google it, Google this name, and then you will find it, install it, and then you just put in range that is between zero and 255, and then just start the scan. It will take some time, but it will find, and I'm just going down until I find the one. So I'm guessing it's this one because you look at the ports that it's doing so it's not that but so let's try 189 in this list first so we hope we have to open putty so on putty i give in that ip and then i do open yes it just found it i think but let's be sure yes we have a vzbot 330 connection now we can close Angry IP scanner, and we have just or our our SSH, and now the fun can begin, and we can start doing all these commands. So the first command is to uh, update our Raspberry Pi, sudo apt get update. So we do it, and then we need to type in our password, and it will just try to fetch all the updates available. And then we're gonna do the second command, which is upgrade here. So all you have to do is to follow all these 
steps and you will be able to just run your printer in no time. Fairly easy to be honest, but it's just uh, some couple things that you have to make sure you're making them. So this is finished. We have to put in this command, CD clipper. So we're in the map and now we need to make make many config. There we go. And then we have this screen here. And then the first thing you have to do is to press a space bar. So you open this section as well. So the first thing we have to choose is a microcontroller here. And then we need to give in the SMT32. So you can see here that it's been chosen. So I'm using the Super 8 Pro. That's why I need to choose the 743. Mine is that one. So let's go there. 743. There we go. And then it's already going to 128 bootloader offset, which is correct. And we need to also choose here the crystal clock frequency is 25 megahertz. Leave this as it is. And now you have to press here the space bar. And then you have to type in. PF8, there we go. So just like this, but I will also put the link in the description below where you can find all these documentation where you can see all these, you know, things you have to put in. So after that, you just press enter and then press Q on your keyboard and then press Y to save the configuration. After that, we have to compile it. So we type in make. And then we just enter it and then just wait patiently until the firmware of for your uh, Super 8 Pro is being made. After it's finished, you will see this uh, in the end. So it'll also tell you where the file is. So it's at the out uh, folder and it's called clipper.bit. So we have to open another program, which is called WinSCP. I'm using that one. So at WinSCP, you have to choose the protocol to SCP. And then you just type in the IP address we found at Angry IP Scanner. So it was this 189. So you just type in your login and password, which was mine is Pi and Raspberry. And then we log in. Just say yes. And there we are. So now we need to find the bin file that is in here. So I think it's at clipper and then out and then we have to find it yeah it's here it just made so clipper.bin first you need to download this file and then you have to rename it to firmware.bin so once we download the file here clipper.bin firmware we have to rename it to firmware.bin there we go and then we have to put this onto the sd card and put the micro sd card into your mcu and then just power it on and you have to wait a couple of minutes until it flashes the firmware onto your MCU. After that, you can turn it back off and then take your micro SD card and put it inside of your PC. And then the uh, file that's on there should be named flycur. So F L Y dot C U R. If you can see that, it means your firmware is being successfully flashed onto your MCU. If you don't see that file, you have to do this all over again because something went wrong. So after that, make sure your MCU is turned on and connected via USB uh, Type-C to your Raspberry Pi. And once the connection is there, we're gonna see if they can talk with each other and the connection is correct. So we have to type in this command after we log in SSH into your Raspberry Pi again. So this command goes in there and then we can see this one it means it's connecting to my uh, MCU. Raspberry Pi can communicate with it and here is the serial number that we need so make sure you copy this and now we're going to make our, our pi as a secondary mcu so that the cpap can be controlled by the interface so for that we need to put in this command cd clipper and then we're gonna and put in this command we type that in and then we have to type in our passwords that's one command, and then we're gonna type in this command or copy and paste it actually. sudo and enable clipper mcu service, type that in, and then it's created uh, the link, and that's it. 
and then we have to select the correct MCU. So CD Clipper again, we're already there. So make many config. There we go. So here we have to choose here and we have to choose Linux process. That's it. Leave, leave everything else the same, but there's only this option, but just leave it like that. And then you have to save and exit. So you press Q and save configuration. So you, you press Y. That's it. And then you have to type in sudo service clipper stop. That's it. And then make flash. And you just have to wait. And after that, you have to type in sudo service clipper starts. And that's about it. Now we're going to install Clipper screen. For that, we need to type in, well, I'll just copy and paste this command. So that's, this is also taking a while. So sit back and relax. And just here, we type yes, why, why again. And I have to warn you guys, after you've done this, it will disconnect your Raspberry Pi from your Wi-Fi network. There is a known issue in Clipper screen. And also your touch screen most likely won't work. Uh, from Mellow, so I will show you guys both how to fix both of them and uh, you do need to connect your Raspberry Pi through uh, Ethernet connection in order to fix these issues because this came out like recently this is something pretty annoying and Clipper screen is still not fixed but there is a workaround so we can fix it together so after here after we've done this it's probably out of the network now we need to put our Ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi and then wait a little bit until it goes onto the network again. And then we need to look for angry IP scanner for a new IP address because now it's Ethernet and it will most likely be another IP address. So I already done it and I am going to check which one it is. So I'm guessing this IP address. So I'm going to try that one. So I'm going to go to putty and type in that IP address. There we go. And it looks like it's this one. So just pi and then raspberry. Yes, we're logged in. So after we're logged in through Ethernet this time, we need to fix our Wi Fi issue, which is not connecting. So we have to type in the command or just type in NMTUI. And then we get this screen. And on this screen, we need to edit a connection. So choose it with, by entering it, and then we need to add one, and it's Wi-Fi, we choose Wi-Fi, and then you need to go to SSID, you just type in your SSID. Um, let me check mine, just real quick, 664. So here, and then you just leave those, and then you need to choose the security. It's this one, VPA and VPA2 personal, and then we need to type in the password. There we go. Once you've done this, you just have to go all the way down and then choose OK. I was pressing the tap button and then I press enter. So now you can see Wi Fi connection one is already there. And then I'm just going to go to back and then just choose quit. So now normally you can just um, uh, take your Ethernet cable off, but we have to find our IP address again, which is pretty annoying, I know. So we just close this. And then on the angry IP scanner, we just started again. And it's now 189. So it came, it went back to the old IP address. So you could have tried, I could have tried it, but I didn't. And now we can find it here. It's 189 in the back. So we're going to just SSH into it again with putty. So we just log in, there we go. And now we are connected through Wi-Fi again, which is the first fix. And now we need to fix the issue with the touchscreen not working. Maybe yours will work. And I don't know if, well, in my case, it didn't work. So I need to do this fix. So in order to fix Mellow 
touchscreen issue is uh, giving this command, type that in, and then it's asking for my password. Then we go here, and then we have to scroll down. So I need to press uh, page down until I find DT overlay option. So let's go down, DT overlay, which is this one here. And we just have to add something to it, which is an F right here. So I just type in F. So it's FKMS instead of KMS. So DT overlay, uh, VC4 and FKMS instead of KMS. Once you've done that, that's it. You don't touch anything else in that in that text file. And then you press Control and then X. Save modify buffer. You just press Y. It says file name to write. So we just type Enter. And that's it. So now you can reboot your system and the touchscreen should work. So what we have to do now is to go to our main sale installation and give in the serial that we found on the uh, Pi. We have to put it in the config file and then it will be able to communicate and then your clip screen and everything will work as well. So on this screen with IP address that we found, it was another one that this is another printer installation. So you just type in your IP address here and then you go to machine and then you go to printer.cfg here, right here. So you click on there and then here on your CFG file that uh, you have to put in this serial number right here and then just save and restart and it will be able to communicate with your system which will look like something like this here no error codes or whatsoever and then your printer will be working well this is after installation of the camera of course i'm just uh, showing you guys so this is the interface that it will look like and also you need to download the printer.config file from the website of uh, VisiBot, and then you will have to put everything right here. So the macros, main sale, uh, these are made automatically. And the, the most important one is a printer.cfg. Without that, the printer cannot do anything. It's on the website, so I will also share the link in the description below, so you can just download them and put them in. But those are the basics. So you need to manually change stuff like your wiring and everything needs to be correct. So that's only just to show you guys what the printer.cfg will look like and the basic setup. But you will have to, if you have followed my guide from the beginning until now, I will also share my printer.cfg and you will be able to just use my printer.cfg, well, the one that I actually uh, outsourced and it's working perfectly. Well, that's about it for now, guys. This is the installation of your Raspberry Pi Clipper uh, for your uh, VZBot 330. And after this, it's kind of a little bit of tuning. Then we will just look at a couple more stuff and then we will have to see what's uh, left on the printer. That's about it. Thank you guys for watching and hit the thumbs up if you liked the video, hit the thumbs down. If you didn't like the video, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this in the future. Bye.